evening all. Welcome back to our gaming advents du jour de 2014, the whatever. It's just me today, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, seriously, seriously, don't sigh. I heard you, bro. I heard you. Anyway, there we go. Let's have a look at some of the games that we played in our advent and let's talk about how good they are. These games form potentially some of the greatest games of 2014 and others and beyond. Um, and I think I'd like to recommend them to you. So here goes. This year in the advent calendar, I think we saw a huge amount of games that really drew out, I think, the differing kind of styles of games that you can play. And I think I'm quite keen to recommend a good number of them. And let's kick it off with this obvious one is uh, Shadow of Mordor. It's brilliant. You can ride trolls. It's Lord of the Rings. Um, it's open world sandbox, but it's not massively ridiculously over the top. The powers and the upgrades make you feel like God, and it was just brilliant. So I give that a massive, massive thumbs up. I think it was just, yeah just definitely worth worth buying um it's currently on sale on steam for about twenty dollars um so definitely go get it while you can um on to games this one well this one's a funny one this one is one that i probably wouldn't recommend you buy just yet but you keep your eye on maybe put it in your wish list and this was starforge um <laughs> where to begin with this it's basically a minecraft clone without the blocks um and in space but it had a really nice um, voxel destruction like Space Engineers, if you know what that is. Um, it had a great technology tree to a point. And it just kind of, I don't know, something about it just felt really good. It had a massive open world um, that, while not limitless, felt it. And um, as you can see, one of the technology things I've done here is I've built a little hovercraft, which is nice. Um, and I'm scaling mountains. And I just, uh, to me, it worked. It really did feel good. Another game here is the Accordion Simulator 2014. Now we didn't, f I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is Metro Last Night. By and far, probably by and large, the best game I played this year. Um, it's a short game, it was only about five to six hours long, but it just worked. It was brilliant. I liked it a lot. It just made sense. Um, the lighting engine's brilliant. The stealth engine is second to none, literally second to none. And the story is pretty interesting. So I give it a massive thumbs up. It's it's cheap on Steam as well at the moment. In the Steam sale, go buy it. Um, we'll return to Metro this light because there is quite a lot to do with it. Um, but I think, yeah, certainly looking at that as one of my kind of picks, I would say that was a good one. Um, returning to the list though, while we have a bit more Starforge play, let's just go down the list. So I think obviously Shadow of Mordor was very good, but this is where I think you need to balance open world or round based games with something that does have a story. And I'll give you an example. Max Payne 3 was probably the finest game from a story point of view that I played this year as well. I'm a big fan of Max Payne anyway. I love Max Payne 1 and 2. It just, it just works. I just love the idea of it. It's, it. You feel so sorry for the guy. And any game that inspires, I think, that that kind of level of, of wanting to, you know, kind of do good it is Max Payne. And I think Max Payne 3, the story was very good. It was very, very effective, very, very interesting. Um, I have very little to complain about with Max Payne 3 at all. And I thought it worked really well. I thought it was very, very fun indeed. Um, other games that I think are obviously like that, I think would be something, you know, around things like Payday. Payday isn't really story driven like Max Payne, but it does have a story. It's a, it's a kind of episodic nature and I liked it I thought it made a lot of sense Payday is a game that grew on me this year I've played it before and I didn't like it but this time around yeah I kind of liked it so you know I was, I was impressed uh, obviously back to Metro Last Light um, <laughs> this is literally a part of the thing where you go to the Russian tube station Teatra which is Russian for theatre because you actually get the ability here just to sit and watch a show and I thought, that's nice. I really liked it. I thought it made a lot of sense. So there's lots of these kind of, um, you know, games that give you the ability to obviously expand the game more than just a story. And I thought Metro Last Light did a great job of it. More casual games. I think if you looked at what we played, Maps TD, I have to be careful because I called it Map STD, which is a totally different site entirely. Um, MapsTD.com is, is, is a lovely little site that gives you the ability to you know, plug in your own postcode and play tower defense game. And it's a lovely game you can play on any application. And it just, it just worked. I liked it a lot. And it's silly little things like that. That's Space Chem and, you know, FTL. These are all games that I think they're kind of more tablet based games now. And I think they're definitely where the, the industry seems to be going. And I think, you know, Clash of Clans was one we played as well, which is a solely 
tablet based game and i think that let's just address this because a lot of players feel that they are quote masters of all they survey when it comes to gaming because they have a pc and a console well that's fine but you're missing the obvious next step which is you actually need to have the the kind of further component of this which is tablets tablet gaming i think is the most subscribed to gaming function now more people play angry birds than have ever played mario for example i mean i know that's kind of a sweeping statement but you know it is pretty true because it's you know the, it, just a simple fact is there's billions of phones and tablets in the world and there's only millions of computers and consoles so this <laughs> the difference is already quite extreme um i i honestly really do say that things like uh, clash of clans are just the you know it's where the gaming you know culture is going and some people won't like that, but it is true. Technological wise, you know, tablets will soon be all that we have. You won't have laptops, you won't have desktops, you won't have anything. You'll just have a tablet that you plug into a screen at home or that you plug into your TV, that you plug in here, you do this, you do that. So tablets are the future, my friend. And I think honestly, don't discard or dis, you know, it, disclude um tablets gaming because actually they're pretty fun as well i really really enjoyed clash of clans and i still do to the point where it's it's part of my day every day i play clash of clans and i love it i anyway, know moving on <laughs> onto the kind of round based games that we play so unreal tournament um hotline miami not so much but killing floor and you know these kind of games the they are fun and they are great and you know quake 3 for example these are all kind of games that have a place in i think the the way that games are played and i highly recommend it if you've never played unreal tournament you go play it because it's still very good even the original 2004 version which is what i played is brilliant and i think it's just well worth playing killing flora is a bit i was a bit hostile to because i'm not a fan of that kind of game um but in a gang of people it's brilliant so i think definitely definitely worth looking at on to kind of the games that I'd recommend from a kind of I want to build a world. I mean, look at this as I land, as I take my little buggy and land at my base. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? These kind of games where you build a world is nice. They, they really have a they have a place. And I think a lot of people just want to play shooty shooty killy bang bang, which is fine. But you obviously then are missing out on other, I guess, experiences. And I think games like this bring an, a unique experience to it. Things like Fortress Craft, I thought were very good and so on, but we'll come to that in just a moment. This one, uh, Elite, I mean, I could, Elite uh, Space Engineers, which now has a uh, kind of infinite mode. Um, I reckon these two games are now ready to play. If, you, if you're not playing either of these two games, you're missing out on what could be a cultural sensation and, and it could be changing the gaming zeitgeist. There you go, big words, um, because they just have a different way of doing things now. And look at this, I actually flew 2 million light seconds from Earth and I found Voyager 2. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? I just love that. I think that's exactly, that's exactly the kind of gaming depth and detail that is putting Elite as potentially a game that would just be here for 10, 20 years. And I really recommend it. I really heartily recommend um, Elite. Space Engineers as well. I think Space Engineers has got a huge potential and it's getting brilliant now. So I recommend Elite and, and Space Engineers and they will itch your kind of space game um, itch. <laughs> and they will give you everything you want and I think they're just very good. Um, I think generally when you kind of go down the list, there's things like Sins of a Solar Empire we looked at. I think that was obviously very good. I think there's, a, there's an interesting kind of problem with those kind of games is that well, all of these games is that they suck time from your life and you need to be careful with these because you can't really you can't really play too many games in one go before you start to fry your brain you kind of have to commit to one or two or three at most so i recommend that you have a game that you play like i played dust because it's a round based shooter it's a great way to relax you can sit down you can you know talk to your friends have a play of the game and then you can walk away from it and you know that there's no damage while you're not playing it games like elite and i think eve online and i think space engineers all will give you something that gives a um an enjoyable factor that you can immerse yourself in so if you've got a day 
and you, you, you're willing to spend a day in a game, you'll have fun in any of those games because you'll actually do, you'll achieve a lot. You'll build money, you'll buy things, you'll expand and, and, and so on. And I think this is why those games are good. And you also need your casual games that kind of have a story to them. And I think these are games like, as I said, Far Cry 3 was good. I think, um, you know, Mad, uh, Max Payne 3 was also very good. But I also recommend games like this. This is Fortress Craft. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend you buy this just yet because it's still got a lot of problems. Let me tell you what happened. This save that you're seeing here, I spent about two weeks, <laughs> two weeks building this, this very deep immersive cave. Um, and I, I built a huge structure. It took probably in terms of game time, 20 plus hours. And I had everything automated. Every, all the conveyor belts were bringing the ore to my jet turbine powered factories. It was wonderful. I was so there. And then the save corrupted and I lost the save. So I lost everything. And I thought, well, I'm not going to start again. Sod it. So I walked away. And I'm now playing Tekkit, which is a mod of Minecraft. Hang on, don't switch off, don't switch off. Minecraft Tekkit is a great example of this kind of thing where you build power, mechanisms, machines, you delve, you dive, you invent, you build, you explore, you expand. And I think if you can kind of get over the blocky nature of it, which is you know, it's disturbing to begin with, but once you get past that, you'll see that there's a huge amount of depth. And I warn you now, we are gonna play Tech It in the new year because I am loving it, loving it right now. Don't hate me, bros, don't hate me. I would only ever bring you good games, I promise. And I think things like Tech It are definitely worth looking at. On to other games that I think we played that just are so worthy of mention. Alien Isolation is brilliant. I'm such a coward, I can't play it. And I'm not even trying to, I'm not dressing that up. I'm not saying that to appear cool. <laughs> I can't play it. It scares the bejeebas out of me. And it's just because it's that kind of game that I think just uh, just gets you. Do you know what I mean? So I, I can't play it. But I loved every moan of it up to the point where the alien then started hunting me. And I, um, there's something in my brain that just switches off. Terraria is just also a wonderful, wonderful game that is effectively... Um, one pound 39 on steam at the moment that's two dollars and for two dollars you could have a game that is so deep and so much there and it will take you'll play it for months i guarantee you will love terraria if you love anything like minecraft or if you love anything like exploration and upgrade and you know if you like mario you'll love this game it's just brilliant and it's two dollars that's all it is now so i think heartily recommend that um, we played Battlefield 2, we played so many games that I just think were brilliant, like Quake 3. What a joy to play that again. But I think if I was going to sort of say, you know, if I was going to give you any recommendations, it is Metro Last Light, it is Max Payne 3, it is perhaps, maybe if they sort it out, Fortress Craft Evolved. Um, and I think really just go check out our playlist. If you didn't watch them all, just go check them out and you'll see that there's a huge amount of kind of recommendations there. There's so many different types, there's all types of games there. And I think I wanted to really bring you this kind of spread of games because there is so much to play. But I think, you know, look at what you enjoy. We still love dust. We have always loved dust. I don't know why. It could be a disease. I don't know. But it popped, it topped our charts. It was just, uh, it shouldn't be there, but it is. And I think that's a, that's an interesting kind of, um, you know, thing about it is that it just still seems to get under the skin and it's a good, fun little game. I guess it's just because it's a culmination of other things that um, that we still play it. I don't know. I, as you see, I'm lost for words. I can't explain why we still play Dust. I can't explain why I still enjoy it. I think it's just one of these things. But anyway, there you go. That has been, I think, what we recommended um, as our advent, what we would recommend that you look to purchase and buy. Most, if not all, of these games are on offer on Steam at the moment. So I think if you go and buy them, you're going to get them pretty cheap right now. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.